Okay, today I'm going to go over 10.1 and 10.2 with you today. So let me tell you what uh, section 10.1 and 10.2 is all about. Okay, so 10.1 is called uh, correlation. Okay, so the definition, the definition of correlation is states that there exists a correlation exists between two variables. Like X and Y, like when you plot points on a graph, you have an X, Y uh, coordinates. Um, when the values of one variable are somehow associated with the values of the other there. Okay, so if you guys remember when you all had algebra one, <clears throat> you had to plot points. So when you plot x, y coordinates, your graph, you had your x and y axis, right? You had your y and your x, and you plotted a point, right? You go in right, left or right, depending on the sign, the sign of the x, and then you went up. Well, for these, you there's several things that can happen like when you plot all the points. So for one, you can have points that form, and this is what you wanna look for. If you plot points and you do a study and you want the points and they behave kind of like that, going in a trend going up, we say that that has a positive correlation because it's going upward. If the dots are going trending in a downward, right, like that, we say that that has a negative correlation. Right, so maybe now, right, right now, right now, the pandemic is getting bad. So the rates are going up. So there's a positive correlation going on. You want the vaccine? to kick in and you want the trend to go downward, right? And let's say that the plots, all your little points that you plot are just going out. There is no pattern with them. It's just all scattered. We say that that has no correlation. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to see if the points that you plot are forming one of these three scenarios, okay? So some examples of this could be, you know, let's say that you are investigating <clears throat> um, variables and you wanna see whether or not they are correlated. So you gotta remember too, that correlation Correlation does not mean that one variable is the cause of the other. It just means, it means 
that they are somehow linked. Right? They're linked. So you have to investigate. You would have to investigate. Why? That's part of being a researcher, right? And so we can have a whole bunch of examples. I'm gonna list a few so you can see what we're looking at. So let's say, for example, uh, is there a relationship between exercise and weight? weight loss, right? So exercise and weight loss. Well, yes, there is linkage between the two, right? There has been studies that say, you know, if you exercise, you can lose weight. So yeah, those are, those are linked, sure, yeah. You could also uh, look at two variables such as a uh, common one that you see in the news, uh, is uh, autism and vaccinations, right? We see, we see sometimes people say that autism and vaccinations, immunizations are, are linked. Yes, but they have not proven that this is the cause of that. We don't know. It could be genes. It could be any. It can be environmental. We don't know. So they are linked. We could have, uh, I don't know. Uh, you could have uh, number of shoes uh, you purchase or purchased that could be linked to hair loss, right? That could be silly, but hey, there is a connection between the two. You could also say, uh, you have people eating bread, eating bread is somehow linked to incarceration, jail, time right so they are all of these there is some relationship there's some relationship between them but that doesn't mean that one is a cause of the other that would this would be interesting to know but hey it could be so that's what you're going to investigate you're going to be given two variables and your goal is to see whether or not those two variables have some sort of relationship between the two so how do we do it? Right. So what we do is we measure the strength. So we measure the strength. We measure the strength of the relationship. And to, uh, and see on a scale what the uh, strength is. So on your stat disk, I have, you may want to download the notes using stat disk for chapter 10, okay? You download it, it tells you how to have stat disk plot the points for you. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna be given two rows of data, an X and a Y. It doesn't matter 
whether they're given in rows or columns. The first row, you're going you're gonna to have to type them in as a column. So row one, you're going to type as column one. And row two, you have to type them in column wise, right? So you're going you're gonna to transpose that row and type them in downward, not sideways, but downward. Row one, row two. So your first row is X, second row is Y. Okay, so you type them in, then you go to the second page, and this will show you all how to enter that in StatDisk. So you would go to the tab Analysis, you choose Correlation and Regression, and you'll get this window. Okay, so if you look at the window, They're going to ask you to uh, in, enter a significant value. You don't touch it unless specified. That's the default. So I would leave it in that form unless when you take part two, you may change it. But that's the default 0.05. So don't change that. Leave that there. Then you're going you're gonna to click on column one is going to be your X and column two is your Y. Okay. Then you hit evaluate. And you can hit scatter plot and it'll show the graph of the points for you. It'll plot the X, Y's. And that way you all can see whether or not there is a trend, whether there's a pattern with them. Maybe, maybe it looks linear where it's going up or they're going down or they're going sideways like that right. so the stat disk will will graph it for you you just have to uh, enter the numbers okay All right so once you hit evaluate you can you can do scatter plot or you can look at this chart here so this this chart is very important because you're going to find a number on this chart that will tell you the strength of the relationship between the two. So the number that you're gonna look for is this correlation coefficient R. This number right here, right there. Right, they're gonna give you an R number. That R number, you went around to three places. This is your correlation coefficient R. So once you round it to three places, you are going to map it on this chart. There's a scale. It goes zero to one on the right, and then it goes from zero to negative one on the left. So you would plot that number, that R number along here. So if it's negative, you're gonna plot it. You can plot it on the right. If it's negative, you're gonna plot it on the left. So let's say, for example, the number was 0 0.482. Well, 0 0.482 is going to be about here, right there. So it would be considered a low correlation. So let's say that your R ended up being uh, 0 0.784. Okay, well, 0 0.84 is, is higher than a half. So it should be about there, so it would be labeled as high correlation. If your R was zero, there is no correlation. There is no relationship between the two variables. Right? The higher the number, the more co uh, highly correlated it is. Anything beyond 0.5 is considered a high. That means there's a huge relationship between the two variables. Likewise, on the other side, if you get a negative negative 0.112 it would be about there negative 0.112 so it would be considered low if your number was uh negative eight negative 0.825 it would be right here it would be a high correlation so that means there is a trend between the two so usually in the real world in the real world when you do studies and all that usually it's going to be in the low if for some reason you end up getting above 0.5, wow, you struck it rich. Usually you don't have many variables that 
go beyond 0.5. But if it happens, whoa, you, you found something interesting, okay? So you would plot it. Whatever that R correlation coefficient is, you plot it, and then you see the, the, the strength of the correlation. So let's practice. Let's, let's do an example of, of how uh, this is going to work. So make sure that you guys print uh, 10 uh, notes using uh, stat disk for chapter 10, OK? So you can have that scale in this paper. OK, so let's, let's do an example. And I'm going to go to page, um, in your book, I'm going to go to page, um, page, go to page 476, and we'll do a couple of them so you can see how that works. Okay, 476. Okay, it's 476. And let's look at number 13, all right? So this is what you guys are going to do. For all the problems on sections 10.1 and 10.2, you're going to find three things. Do not answer the questions that are stated in the book. You're going to find three things for your homework. You're going to do three things. You're going to find, here's what you're going to for sections and you're gonna and what's gonna happen is you're gonna notice that the problems from 10 2 and 10 3 are identical so what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine 10 1 and 10 2 and just pick one section and you're gonna find these three things it doesn't matter which section either 10 1 or 10 2 regardless you're gonna find these three things okay so the first the things that you're gonna find for the homework and for the test, mind you also for the for your final, for the homework and your final exam, you're gonna find one, you're gonna find the R. I wanna know what the R value is. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to identify the strength. Is it no correlation? Is it low correlation or is it a high correlation? Okay, those are the three things that can happen. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna identify which 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 uh correlation is it gonna fit. Okay. Then you're gonna do part three. Part three, I'm not going to tell you yet, but that's going to be the regression part. Not aggression, but regression. So here's, here's what you guys are going to find Look, for your homework. You're going to find it in your final exam. You're going to find these three things. You're going to find your R, and then you're going to identify what's the strength of this R using that scale that I just showed you all. And then I'll show you all in a minute the regression equation. I'll explain what that is in a minute. Okay. All right. So let's do 13 first and we'll just do the first three parts. You can see how it works. How it works. Okay. So let me let's go to stat disk. Well, let's go to the problem and let's look at the problem. All right. So it says listed below are numbers of internet users per 100 people of numbers of Nobel laureates per 10 million people. Uh, is that about how you pronounce it? Laureate, laureates, laureates. I don't know. I can't pronounce it. Um, for for different countries, is there a sufficient evidence to conclude that there's a linear correlation between the internet users and Nobel laureates? All right. So what you do is you notice I have two rows. First row is internet users. Second row is laureates. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type the this first row on the first column, all right? So look at these numbers. They go 79.5, 76. I am going to type them on the spreadsheet vertically, all right? So I'm going to type them in vertically. So here I go. So 79.5. Next one is 
Notice I'm typing them vertically. 56.8, 67 point 6, 77.9, and 38.3. All right, so type them in. There's my first row. I'm putting them as a column. 29.5, 5, 76.8, 67.6, 77.9, 38.3, okay? And then on my, on, my, um, on my second column, I'm going to put, I'm gonna label the second column with these numbers. I'm gonna put them in order. I, they go from left to right. Top one goes left to right. I'm gonna top to bottom, okay? So I'm gonna type those in. Okay, here I go. 5.5, uh, 5.0, uh, 3.3, 1.7, 10.8, and 0.1. Okay, I type the numbers vertically. There's, there's, there's row one, here is row two. This is your X, this is your Y, okay? Type them in. I am ready to go to analysis. I'm going to go to correlation and regression. I'm going to select, I don't, I don't touch this, don't touch that at all. All right, so the first column is one, second column is two, always one and two, don't forget to change those. Hit evaluate. And you're looking for the R. So right here is your R. You're going to round that number to three places. So that column has an R value of 0 0.799, okay? 0.799, right? So now I'm gonna go back Let me switch to my paper. Okay, there's the 7.799. I'm gonna look at my scale. I wanna see where is 0 0.799. It should be about here-ish, maybe about there. So it's considered to be a high correlation. There you go. You got the first two uh, parts. Okay, so you put your R, you put your, you label your, your strength of correlation. So that, that's pretty high. Okay, we'll come back to, we'll come back to uh, the third part in a little bit. Okay, not, we're not ready for that yet. So let's do another one. Let's do another one. Let's do, uh, Let's do another problem from the book. Let us do, um, let's see, which one should we do? Let's do number 15, why not? Pizza and the subway. All right, so sometimes they will give you rows that you don't even need. All right, just throwing it out there. They could give you irrelevant information that you do not need. So they're just trying to confuse you. So let's, let's see, let's see. So we're doing 15. All right, so, all right. So number one, we got to find the R. And then number two, we got to figure out whether it's a no correlation, a low or a high. I'm not going to write all the scenarios. We're just going to put down what it is. All right, so let me read it. So the pizza connection is the principle that the price of a slice of pizza in New York City is always about the same as the subway fare. Use the data listed below to determine whether there is a significant linear correlation between the cost of a slice of pizza and the subway fare. Okay, so notice it says they want to know the, the, the correlation between the cost of a slice of pizza and the subway, subway fare. They, it says nothing about CPI, so we don't even need that row. 
right? So I'm going to type these pizza costs on the one first column, all right? So I'm gonna type those in, and then on the second column, I'm gonna put the subway fare as a column, okay? So let's see, let's, let me switch over to stat disk. All right, let me go back to my data. I'm gonna clear it, okay? And I'm gonna type in the pizza cost on this row. The pizza costs are gonna go here. All right, so here I go. 0 0.15, 0 0.35, a dollar, 1.25, one point seven five. Yeah, you're gonna have to type these numbers in. We don't. They don't ask you to use the data in uh, step this. You're gonna have to manually type these numbers in. It's all right. It's like texting. Two point seven five. All right. So those 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 are the pizza costs. Now I gotta type in on the second column, I'm gonna type in the subway fares. So it starts at 0 0.15, next one 0 0.35, the next one is a dollar, 135, 150, 150, two dollars. 225, 250, and $2.75. All right, so let's go back and see, look at the data. Look at the data. This is the pizza, and this is the subway. Pizza, subway, right? Then you get all the data va values inputted. Go to analysis. Correlation regression, select column one, column two, evaluate. You wanna get the R, you gotta round it to three places, folks. Round it to three. So my answer is 0 0.992, 0 .0, 0 0.992, okay? Then we're gonna look at my scale and see where is 0 0.992 at on my scale. Ooh, that is very close, extremely close to number one right there. So that's right, right? It's 0 0.992, right? It's it's very close to one. So we label it as a high correlation. Okay, make sense? Okay, so that's all you do. That's all you're doing. You're, so this is saying that the, the slice of pizza and the uh, subway fares are somehow correlated. They are linked together somehow. Interesting. They haven't been to Peter Piper's. I love Peter Piper's. Okay, so that's, that's how you do the first two parts. Okay, you don't have to write all three of them. You're just going to write down whichever one it fits. So you don't have to write all three and circle it. You just write down high correlation. So that's what I want to see on your homeworks. And that's what I want to see on the exam. The last two problems on the exam are going to uh, ask you to do this three things. You're going to do all three things on the final. I want to see all three to get credit. You got to show all three of them on your final exam and on your homework, right? So don't don't answer the questions on the book. I wanna see those three things uh, on your homework and on the final exam. All right, so let me show you guys next the how to find the regression equation. Okay, so for the regression equation, if you all have taken college algebra or you've taken algebra, we, there is an equation of a line 
We all remember what the equation of a line is in math. So in math, the equation, the equation of a line, is written as do you remember anyone 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 all right it was written as y equals mx plus b that's how in math that's how we write an equation of a line so in math there was this M thing here. You know what the M stood for? The M was the slope. That determined the inclination of how the line went. If they go up or did it go down? If it's positive, it went up. If that slope was negative, it went down. That's what the M represented. The B was called the y-intercept. What did that tell you? That tell you where did the line, if you were to graph it, if you were to graph a line, like that, that y-intercept told you where did that line cross the y-axis. That's what the y-intercept told us. That's the y-intercept, y-intercept. So that's how we write things in math. Now in stats, we write it different. In stats, the equation of a line is written as, y hat equals b sub o, not b o, make sure you wear deodorant, b o plus b sub one x, okay? So it's backwards. So notice your slope always has the x. That's how you know that that's the slope number because it contains an x. Over here, look where the, look where the, there's your the X, your B1 is your slope. And your BO, <laughs> your BO is your Y intercept. So it's written backwards. Okay, yeah, of course, stats has to be different. You'll see if you take, uh, you guys are gonna be taking college algebra, some of y'all, you'll see that that's the equation of the line. Stats, this is how we write it in stats. In physics, they write it a different way. They write it with uh, I's and K's. Weird. And they call their version uh, vectors. So everyone's different. Every discipline has its different way of interpreting lines. So, but this is how, this is how in stats, that's how we write it. Okay. So, in StatDisk, we the, it, it tells you it tells you exactly the numbers. So if we go back to our StatDisk, and we can do number fifteen. We can write the equation for number fifteen. Right? So on on your notes on page three and four on your notes. Right. Again, you type the data in one column, second column, right? right? You do the same thing like we did before, blah, 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 blah. Right in the middle, right here, there's your R, like we got before, there's your R. There it is, there's your reg regression results, your BO and your B1, and it tells you your y-intercept, your BO is that number, your slope is your B1. 
And of course, it tells you where to round. You're going to round each of those two numbers to three places, and here's your equation. Okay, so let's look at our number 15 that we did. I'll have to do the other one in a little bit. So I'm going to write my equation for number 15. So you're going to write y hat equals, all right? So we're going to go back to our stat disk. And let's find it. There it is. Your y intercept. And look, it even gives you the formula so you won't forget. Your BO number goes first. Then you follow it up with your B1 and don't forget the X. All right. So we got to round these numbers to three places. Okay. So that one's going to be negative 0 0.011. And we put a plus, and then we write 1.0111. 1 1 and then you attach an X. Right, so this is how you write it. There's your equation of the line. Because this is very highly correlated, if you were to graph it, this line is what it's almost forming. You don't believe me? Check this out. If you go back to your stat disk, right, and if you were to, let me see, where is it at? Uh, scatter plot. Look, look, I'm going to hit scatter plot. Check it out. You see this orange line? That orange line is the equation of that line. That orange line is the equation of the line. That equation reads y hat equals negative 0 0.011 plus 1.011 x. That's the equation of the line. That's that's what it is. Right? It almost look, look at the dots. They almost fall exactly on that line. So close. So close. Yeah. Okay, so we don't need the graph. All you guys need is the results. All right, so this is what I want to see on your exam and your final. I'm going to write this equation. The end. Okay, so you write your R, you write your strength, and then you put your equation. Okay, now let's go back to Number 13, let's do number 13. And I've got to type the numbers back in. I don't remember what they were, but I'm going to go back and type them in again. I shouldn't have deleted it, but oh well, I did. All right, let me go back and type the numbers in. Let me clear it. Clear, yes, yes, I want to clear it. All right, I'm going to do number 19, number 13 again. I'm going to type the numbers in. Okay, so this was the internet users, 79.5. Uh, seventy nine point six. I'm having trouble seeing fifty six point eight. Um, sixty seven point six. Um, seventy seven point nine. Um, thirty eight point thirty eight point three. I think. Yeah. Okay, so that column is the internet users. This is that column right there, internet, this is internet users. This one is the Nobel laureates. Laureates, laureates of this, 9.0, I don't know, I don't know, I can't pronounce it, I don't know. Used to cook, 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.20, 3.21, 3
right? So I'm gonna write, there's my formula. All I have to do is just plug it in, plug in my BO, plug in my B1. Just make sure that you round each of them to three places and you're done. So my equation is going to be y hat equals negative 8.443 plus 0 0.203, and don't forget the x. Bam. And here is your answer. Ta -da! There it is. There is your regression equation. So you can do all, all of it at one hala. So you can find your R, you can find a correlation, and then you can find the regression. So that's what I'm looking for on all your homeworks for 10, either 10, 1, 10, 2, you're going to find all these things. I think it starts at 13. And you work your way all the way to 25, I think, or 27. And you're going to do this this and this for every single problem you're going to do that 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 and that's goes for the final too i think there's two of them i think i think there's two of them where you have to do wait a minute i think it's two or three there's two of them yeah there's two of them you're going to find this this and this all right all right i think we are done all right so Make sure that you understand that you got to find all those three things, homework and final. And that concludes the method.